There's a few simple things that you can do to your fish tank to make it a little bit more biologically active. These are easy things that you can do to an existing aquarium or to one that you know that you're gonna set up soon. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna shoot this video today within this gigantic mess. Should make everything a little bit more interesting. Hopefully we have enough room for it. We are still in the middle of the fish room remodel slash creation, but I'm super close. Like I know it looks like it's far from being done, but there's like two things that snap them together and then we're moving tanks, they're getting set up and it's gonna look awesome, hopefully. There's probably a bunch of different things that you could do to your fish tank to make it more biologically active, but I'm just picking three here. One of them is pretty simple, straightforward. The second one kind of might be a little difficult to do just depending on where you're at. And then the third one, you might just not be down for, but it's actually kind of like the best thing. And when I say biologically active, I know that's a pretty vague term, but I'm mostly talking about kind of in the plant realm and then things you can do to sort of jumpstart metabolic processes inside of your aquarium. I hope that clarifies a little bit, but let's just start off with the first thing. I know I've been talking a lot about floating plants. We just did kind of like a dedicated video on it recently, but they're just super important. Like at least to the way that I keep tanks and the goals that I have, the floating plant is usually more times than not something that I want to have, mostly because of the two part job that it does. So the first thing, Obviously, it helps to pull nutrients down. If they're getting out of control, that can help you a lot, depending on the situation you have going in your tank. And then at the same time, it also subdues the light a little bit. It just depends on how much you let these things grow. So like, for example, in my big tank here, I kind of just let it do its thing. I let it grow to a point where I almost can't really see what's happening in this aquarium, and then I pull a bunch out. It does kind of shock the system of this tank a little bit as far as light goes, like it goes from having basically no light to then all of a sudden having a bunch more light. But this tank is just so mature and basically bulletproof that it doesn't seem to affect it that much. We don't have any algae issues, nothing really pops up. Sorry for the reflections. Other than just a little bit of green spot that we end up with on the glass, but that's no big deal, super easy to clean. I don't care about it. I'm gonna really riskily set the camera on top of the light here. This might be a terrible idea. Yeah, if I bump that, we're getting wet, but one thing that I love about this plant specifically, Sylvinia, is that it's so easy to remove. Like, it's not duckweed. You're not gonna put this stuff in a tank and then never be able to get it out again like duckweed. I don't, you probably can't see, but we do inevitably have some duckweed in this tank. Like, I don't think it came in on this plant, but it just seems like you put in any type of floating plant, duckweed will somehow magically just appear, right? But, um, you know, it's easy to take out. We could pull this out. We can go put it into other tanks, like the fry tanks that we have down here, and we can spruce those up. And it's just a plant that usually never lets me down. And, you know, I think it does a pretty good job at removing things like nitrate, probably ammonia as well. It's definitely not gonna solve all of your problems right away, like overnight or anything, but when you can get it established in a tank like this, where it's really happy, pretty much all the pieces of the plant look healthy and it just keeps coming back even when you pull a bunch out, then you know it has to be assimilating some amount of nutrient, right? And in this tank in particular, we don't really see nitrogen in any capacity whatsoever. So, so it's my secret weapon. I think that was the title of that video. For the most part, floating plants as a whole are pretty active growers, hence, you know, they wanna add some biological activity to your tank that also has a benefit for your fish. Then I think it's a really good pick. And, you know, you might put some sylvania in your tank and it might not work out too well. You're gonna to have to play around with the different plants. Um, again, you don't have to go with duckweed. I know most people don't even wanna to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Let me get this uh, moldy sylvania out of here for you. Uh, but sylvania in particular, but also just floating plants in general, also serve as really good micro environments for small fish. I use a ton of this stuff down in my rice fish tubs for my babies because it gives them a little bit more comfort. They have a place to hide as well as just a little micro environment for critters that they might want to eat to live. And they're going to help, you know, in theory, pull that nitrogen concentration down because we don't have any filters in these little tubs down here. So floating plants in general, not just the sylvania, are also a really good choice for biologically activating your planted tank. Or, you know, even if you have a tank that isn't planted, you can still kind of make it a planted tank by putting in some floating plants. Super easy, anybody can do it. I think the last video I recommended people go onto eBay because you can find people or companies, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but there's packs of different floating plants you can get. So 
There's will be like a pack with frog bit, sylvania, and something else, water hyacinth maybe, I don't know. There's probably a bunch of different ones, but that way you can try out a couple different ones and see what work for you. Cause I'll even have tanks here, maybe not in this room. Actually, yeah, in this room where like, for whatever reason, the sylvania just doesn't rock as hard as it is in that tank. So they can be a little finicky and if they're dying off, you know, you want to take them out maybe do a little experimenting to try and figure out why they're not so happy. But I just think that's a, a pretty good way to figure it out. Like three of them, chances are one of them is gonna work out for you. One of the reasons why floating plants can be so good for our aquariums is because they're a plant that's technically in our aquarium that has access to the air. Plants that have access to the air are gonna be able to grow faster than plants that are in the fish tank, right? Because the CO2 level is so much less in the water than it is up here. Like it's kind of crazy to think about that up here above the fish tank, the CO2 is like 400 parts per million, but in the water, it's like, I think it's like four. But you gotta keep in mind that, yeah, this plant probably can grow faster than other plants, but having access to that amount of CO2 is normal for this plant. It would be very unnormal for plants in here to see that concentration. So kind of a catch 22 there that doesn't really matter so much. The main thing is that because this plant is up out of the water and has the ability to grow, it can grow a little bit faster than other plants that don't have access to the air. That's gonna go for pretty much any aquarium plant that makes it up to the surface. So it could be a rotala that you have stems of, it's growing up as soon as it hits the top and grows up out, it might even grow over the edge of your tank. If it is doing that, it is gonna be probably removing some more nutrients than it would otherwise. And I think it just looks cool. And you know, if you're having trouble with plants in your aquarium, the floating plant can be for a lot of people, the one that takes off and actually is like the first plant that somebody can grow. I've heard that story a bunch of different times. Then that gives the person a little bit more confidence to try out some different stuff. And then the pieces of the puzzle start to click. So go with some floating plants. My favorite, again, the Sylvidia minima. Check and make sure it's legal in your state because these things can tend to be kind of invasive species -y. To kind of tie in to floating plants, another really good method is to have plants that grow up out of your aquarium and into the air. The same way that the sylvinia or any floating plant can take advantage of the air and grow really quickly, the same thing can be said about, you know, pretty much any plant that you can get to live in your fish tank, like this pothos, or this Swiss cheese plant hiding in the back, or the mondo grass that's kind of nestled in between the filter, or even my half-dying old creeping jenny that we put on from one of the ponds this summer. And this is one of the things that not only does a job for you, but it also helps to like look like the aquarium is more biologically active, or there's just more happening in it, right? Like, so if this little betta aquarium didn't have any plants in it. Imagine if it was just the Dragonstone and then we had all of this foliage up here. I still think the thing as a whole would look pretty good. It's not all about looks though. The, the looks help, like let's be real. Um, so that is an easy way. I mean, Pothos is like the one that everybody talks about. Pretty much, I think 90% of the people that grow plants up out of their aquarium, they're growing a Pothos. But there's others too. Like I mentioned a couple of them. The Swiss cheese is really cool. I've seen people like grow full-blown Monsteras out of a tank. That's something that I really wanna do soon. Or you can rock the peace lily like we have over here on the aquarium that is only powered by the sun. Here's the other guppy tank in the side of the kitchen, which I'm trying not to show because it's just like, it's, it's not great. The pothos up here also doesn't look great. This thing was hanging down on the side for a super long time. A bunch of the leaves died off. Like all of these things aren't uncommon. We definitely need to spruce up this corner, but all these things help to reduce like the nitrogen, probably the phosphate. I mean, all of the things, all of the nutrients in your aquarium will get taxed by these plants. People love to talk about how these things are so good at removing nitrogen that you won't see it or you know it's gonna solve your nitrogen problem that you might have. From my experience, that's mostly true, but there's always exceptions to that, even in situations where you don't think it would be. So like in this tank, it's roughly 10 gallons of water. There's one betta fish and there's like, I don't know, two or three autos in here. Not a lot of fish, right? I also don't put very much food into this tank ever. Like I gotta feed our fish in here and I do, you know, every other day, probably a few pellets, but certainly not enough to like cause a, a real big buildup of nitrogen in a tank. At least from my experience, that shouldn't be something that's happening or that's kind of like a weird thing. We have nitrate 
a decent amount. Like, I don't know if you can, probably can't tell. Like, look at the GH and then look at the... Try and get a focus. There's a decent amount of nitrate in this tank. Despite the fact that we have all of this biologically active stuff, all the pothos, all the Swiss cheese plant, I mean, it's, it's a little tiny Swiss cheese plant, but that's a pretty big pothos, right? It's healthy, it's growing good, all the leaves look good. We're not putting a ton of food into the tank, and it just like, in my experience, this should be an aquarium that doesn't have any nitrogen in it. Yet we're rocking like close to 50 ppm. So that tells me that there's something else going on here. There's some reason for why that buildup is taking place. Now, now without a doubt, I'm sure that these plants are helping to keep that concentration lower than what it would be if they weren't here. But even this on 10 gallons of water is not enough to completely solve an issue. An issue that's still kind of perplexing to me. Like, even if that nitrogen is brought on by, say, these decaying roots here, they're a prime suspect. Who's that? That's a piece of Mondo grass. So some of my Mondo grass isn't happy. It's got some rapid root die off. That could certainly be where some of the nitrogen is coming from. Doesn't make complete sense to me because that's not like a lot. Not as much as you would expect, but it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, these plants aren't 100% foolproof gonna do the job that you want. And it really just depends on where you have them placed. So try rocking some plants or maybe even a potato up out of your aquarium. It's just a fun thing to do. It's something that can help the aesthetic of your tank, whether your aquarium is planted or not. And don't get discouraged by my random kind of mystery tank over here. These things can definitely help you out on your mission to get that tank that you wanna have from an aesthetic point of view and from a biological point of view. Oh, and if you're looking for how to attach different plants to stuff, the potho carry clips are my favorite. They got not only the potato clip, you know, they got ones like these for bamboo. And of course the potho clip back there that you can't really see. We did a video highlighting these a little while ago. Not sponsored or anything, I just found these on Etsy and I talked to the dude that makes them and he was really cool and I just, I love these things. So go check them out, I'll have links for them down below. I hate to say it every time, but it's just so true. So I'm not talking specifically about potting soil, but just some type of soil, something that has a charge to it, something that comes with some level of nutrients in it. Not to hate on gravel every single time we talk to each other, um, but it's just the time that it takes for that gravel or sand to become really beneficial or even close to that of soil is just not something that is ideal, at least like for me. I wanna start out and I wanna have my plants have everything they need. Let's check out this awesome carpet of algae in these two tanks, <laughs> right? Like look at the plant behind it. Uh, these tanks only have sand in them. They've been set up for, I don't know, what I'm gonna be totally guessing here, but like four months, five months. And you can see they're starting to get a layer of waste down in there. I never put a siphon in here to gravel vac anything out. Over time, you know, mulm will collect and we'll start to form some layers here and then that will end up being a source of food and almost soil for the plant roots. But there's just so much more to gain from using any type of soil. So the microbial diversity that you're gonna have in a soil-based tank, whether it's potting soil or if, it, you know, a manufactured soil like an ADA soil, contra soil, tropic soil, whatever, plant roots are gonna be happier in that kind of condition, especially right off the bat. Um, it tends to be something that you don't really need to add stuff like root tabs to, although you can, and it's not gonna be like a bad thing. It's just gonna help you out if your goal is to grow plants, particularly, I mean, obviously, plants that are gonna live in the substrate, right? If you're just trying to have like a sweet Anubius farm, like imagine a million more of these up out of the water, then you know, yeah, you don't need to really focus on soil. But the other things that come along with the soil, like the microbial diversity, like, you know, all the protists and the little bugs that can grow in areas around that because there's just so much more biology taking place, it's only going to benefit your tank, I think. And you can add soil to an existing aquarium. You're not going to be able to put potting soil down in one unless you drain it all the way down, take all the fish out, and then put a cap over it. You still technically could do that, but it's just like infinitely more work. I think the easiest thing to do if you want to add some soil to your tank is get a bucket, get a siphon. I was going to actually do this, but now that I'm here with my hand in the tank, I think I'm just going to kind of paraphrase. Uh, you would suck out the sand with the siphon and then you make a little bare patch or wherever you want to put in some new substrate. And then you just get a cup and you put that cup in, slowly put it into the water and then dump it in place. 
And if you're really cool and you need to do some trademark targeted dumps, you can grab a funnel and a piece of PVC pipe, duct tape it together, and then you can kind of point that thing where you want and have the substrate just slide right into place in kind of like a targeted dump. It's also a little bit easier to do that on bigger tanks, like if you're trying to get some in the way back. Like I said in the beginning of the video, it's a little bit tough to do that one, especially if your tank is already set up, but it's not impossible, you can do it. And you know, if you're trying to grow a, a different carpeting plant in the front, you're gonna be taking stuff out anyway, then you can make that change if you want to. Having a soil substrate can also help to increase the CO2 levels in your aquarium, albeit it probably is a small amount. I don't think we have data to suggest that it makes so much of a difference that you're gonna see like really big changes in your plant growth or anything, but it is just kind of a cool component to the whole thing. But yeah, soil substrates, I think, always something that can help make your overall tank a little bit more biologically active, and I don't think that could ever be a bad thing. All right, last one, don't get mad, but it's CO2. Like I kind of mentioned with the addition of the soil substrate, CO2, if you put in enough into your tank, you're gonna get the most biological activity out of all the things that photosynthesize, uh, like way more than you think. Maybe you even saw the video that I did probably like two years ago now, probably maybe even longer than that, where we did a comparison, we did a side-by-side -side of a tank with CO2 and without CO2, and the difference in the plant growth is pretty remarkable. So the amount of CO2 that's just in our water, regardless of what kind of substrate you have, the mixing of the air and the water, you're gonna have less than 10 ppm's. It's gonna vary, but I think it's between like four and seven parts per million CO2. When we inject it into our tanks, we're going for between 20 and 40 parts per million at the highest. And that makes a huge difference in plant growth. Like the aquatic plants, they're used to seeing those low concentrations. You juice them up four times that, and they just take off. Like even plants that don't really grow that fast are gonna grow faster, like you're gonna notice a difference. Maybe not something like a Nubius, you might see another new leaf or two, but particularly in the stem plant department, in any sort of like a runner, like dwarf sag, hair grass, any of that stuff, it's just, it's gonna take off. And by having a plant like that take off, what's happening? It's rapidly, or it's consuming more nitrogen and other components than it normally would or without the CO2. So you're gonna get a plant that is doing more of the job that probably you want, as far as like waste removal goes. So it's juicing up the growth of the plant, which is what you want, and it's also juicing up the nutrient removal and the, the quality of water protection that those plants can give you. CO2 does have some downsides though, which I totally understand. So you have obviously the cost component of it, the investment into the equipment, it can be a little spendy, I get that. You also have the oopsies, if you mess up with it, you can suffocate your fish. A lot of people don't like even thinking about having that be a possibility. Totally get that too. And then you have the aspect of, you know, your plants are gonna be growing so much faster, you're gonna have to trim them more, or if it's a runner, you're gonna have to pinch off and remove more than normal. I haven't mentioned anything about fertilizers yet, and I mean, we're talking about CO2, which is basically a fertilizer, right? So the whole reason why I don't think I was even gonna touch on liquid fertilizers is because I just don't use them that much. I just don't think that the tanks that I keep would really see that much of a benefit from them, mostly because the tanks where I want the plants to do really well, they have that soil substrate. And I don't know, I just find that macros, even when we can't really detect them, they still don't seem to be a limiting factor. Like the plants are all still really green, signaling that they have plenty of nitrogen. And so for me in those tanks that do have soil where there is so much more mineralization of the nutrients that the plant needs, I just don't think that adding a liquid furt would really help that much. But I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I should be using furts and my tanks would be looking way better. Uh, I, that's just me. Like even in that CO2 experiment that we did a couple years ago, the tank that had the CO2, we weren't able to detect any nitrogen or phosphorus in the water column, yet those plants were still growing really good, I think only because they were able to get those nutrients down from the substrate. We had like a contrasoil or a fluval stratum in that one, and so that would be the perfect example of what I'm trying to explain here. The nutrients might be undetectable in the water column, but they're not undetectable in the tank because they're down in the substrate. And that's something that you probably wouldn't see if you had a clean gravel or sand substrate. Certainly down here on these tanks, if I was trying to grow plants better, um, adding a macro and a micro fur or an all-in-one or whatever might be really beneficial to them. Again, because these have just sand in the bottom, 
albeit the sand is kind of seasoning with that fish mulm and waste down in there. Or even something like a root tab would probably be beneficial. Again, if I was trying to just grow plants better or faster or you know, was dealing with some kind of obvious deficiency. But because that's not the case, I just kind of honestly like get lazy with it. Like I have a ton of ferts just around that I just get lazy and don't use. Um, that's just me. I think if you did have like a gravel or sand only tank that you were trying to make like a really pretty planted tank in, using some kind of a fertilizer, you know, other than CO2 of course, would give you some sort of a benefit. Um, it's just gonna depend on so many factors. I can't, you know, list them off all to you and tell you what would work for you and your tank. So it really just depends on what you wanna do. Um, from a biology standpoint, the CO2 I think is just gonna juice everything up that much more but that might be an aspect of this whole thing that you're not really looking for maybe the first two things that i mentioned are more up your alley and if that's the case i think still an okay video right we got we got something for you yeah those are the few things that i could think of on this busy day while i'm still drowning in all of this stuff uh hopefully next week's video this will be almost done or done enough to where you can get a complete view and scope or idea of what I'm trying to do here and then we can begin work on the other side. So I think it's gonna be cool. I have some interesting ideas for kind of how to make this not look so much like that. And I think it's gonna be a pretty cool fish room. It's almost done. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.